behind you, for those that can't see that are listening to this, you have NBA jerseys of former players. How many players have you coached that are in the NBA or have played in the NBA? Uh, now the number is, with this past year, 19. Okay. I've personally either coached or recruited. Okay. Now, I've asked this of a lot of guys uh, in the prep school world that have coached NBA guys, what separates these guys from just the players that don't make the NBA? And what, in your experience, is that it factor they have? The it factor, it, it, it's several. Um, they have to have, I call they have to have a sickness. You know, you have to have a sickness to make it to the highest level. And that's what I'm saying when I talked about Jack McClinton and the Isaiah Thomas of the world. They do beyond what's required. You know, they're going to be early. They're going to stay late. But then they're going to go and when everyone else is sleeping, they're up at five in the morning doing something to make themselves a better player. You know, or at night, you know, they're asking me to send them footage from practice, not to see themselves doing great things, but to make themselves better. You know, you have to have a sickness about this thing. You know, it's the same thing. Alexander Graham Bell, before the telephone was invented, failed 9,999 times. He had a sickness about that invention. And that's what our guys, you have to have a sickness. If you don't have a sickness, it's hard to be here. Um, secondly, I tell, no matter where you are, you have to do at least one thing better than anyone else in the world at that time to make it to the NBA. You know, you're gonna be the best shooter, you can be the best defender because most guys get drafted out of the top five or 10. You are going to be a role player in the NBA when you first get there. There's a guy who jumps off the screen, you know, it was a late second, Isaiah, number 60, right? But he comes in and he knows he has that sickness and he does some things better than anyone. He can score, really score the ball, no matter who's out there. Um, but you have to find one thing in your game for sure. You have to be able to do a lot of things but you have to be able to do something better than anyone else in your draft class, something better than anyone else um, on your G League team, something better than anyone else on your European team that's gonna give you a chance to get one of those 450 spots. Um, there are not a lot of spots, you know, and there's a lot of players trying to get them. So you really find out, and as a coach, you know, I think, um, you know, we grew up, man, you gotta make their strength their weakness. You gotta make their strength their weakness their strength their strength. No, you have to get their weakness up to par, but their strength needs to be their strength. Like, and people get, get it sideways sometimes. You start working on everything else and you forget what makes them their strength their strength. You know, um, so it's a, it's a, you have to have the ability to, to help kids when they find out what that thing is, to make them the best at it while helping them to get good at everything else. But you have to, there's, a, there's always a separator that makes a team take you more than someone else. And a lot of times it has to do with something 20, the other 22 hours of the day when, you, when you're not at practice. Can they trust you? Will you be on time? Will you be early? Are you going to bring other guys with you to help them be better? And I, I back up, Corey, I'm sorry, taking too much time, but one of the other things I do with kids when I'm recruiting them, I talk to them about other good players. I ask them about them. And I, what I'm doing, I'm listening to see if they're able to compliment other people who are good. Mm. And I've been on calls with some big time players. And the first thing they do is trash every guy you ask. I literally have gotten off the phone and walked to my coach's office and said, we don't want him. Um, no matter how good he is, we don't want him here. Because if you can't compliment someone else, that means you're selfish. And you don't want selfish players in your program. That's, that's an easy way to eat your program in, in, uh, inside out from the core when you bring a bunch of people in who can't compliment others. That is great. I've never heard that before, but that's a great, great strategy. Mm. Mm. Learn a lot today. <laughs> <laughs>